in store for all of you. Live from Las Vegas, Nevada, a spectacular night of boxing that features the WBC World Heavyweight Blitz by Night. And panning down, you come to where we are now, the Hilton Pavilion, an exceptional boxing facility. As you view it from the inside, those of you with memories in boxing will liken it to the Box Hall in Munich, West Germany, where they fought the Olympics in that great competition. And so the scene is set for the boxing doubleheader tonight. Hello again, everyone. I'm Howard Cosell. Delighted to have you with us here at ringside at the Hilton Pavilion. We look for an interesting and at times exciting night of boxing tonight. Why? First of all, Liz Holmes. Overwhelming favorite against Ocasio. He should be. Ocasio has had only 13 professional fights. And even though he beat Jimmy Young twice, doesn't appear to be of the stamp of a man like Holmes. So much more experience, bigger, and with hand and speed of feet that... Ocasio doesn't enjoy, but, and here's the interesting element, Ocasio with his awkward style is difficult to penetrate. He's all arms, elbows, shoulders, not above using the head to butt and score a cut against the adversary, and that's one thing to look out for. In the fight that'll be coming up in just a few minutes, we expect a slugfest, yes indeed. Ernie Chavez at 34, it's win or else for him, and he has tremendous knockout power, 55 KOs in his career. Kenny Norton, it's close to win or else for him. The skilled veteran has been around a long time. He's listed at 33, but he is a quality fighter. He has proved it through the years, especially against Muhammad Ali. Let's take a look now at Kenny Norton's boxing history, and let's go back in time to that day in the San Diego Arena when suddenly the whole world knew about Kenny Norton. Kenny Norton was an absolute unknown when he fought this fight. March 31, 1973 against Muhammad Ali. That's the day Ali's jaw was broken and Norton won an amazing split decision. But it appeared that obscurity would beset Norton because in March of 74, he went to Caracas, Venezuela and George Foreman calls it the Caracas Cape. And Norton knocked out in the second. But Kenny didn't quit came back about a year later in the Madison Square Garden, fought against Jerry Quarry, rained blows upon Jerry, and the fight was stopped in the fifth round. Then there was a second fight against Ali, which Kenny lost, and this was the classic third one. Norton thought for sure he had it won, but they gave the decision to Ali. Norton fought on. This one against Jimmy Young, a whale of a battle in Las Vegas, and working Young over to the midriff, Norton won a close decision. He was named the WBC heavyweight champion when Spinks refused to fight him and then defended that crown against Larry Holmes, the classic fight. What a battle that was, with Holmes winning by the slimmest of margins. And then a routine workout against Randy Stevens, an early round knockout. We visited earlier with Kenny at his training camp in Emmett, California. Camp is a necessary evil. I have to be away from my family. I have to really be away from my close friends. I have to be away from the things that, that, that I'm comfortable around. I have to get off by myself. I have to be alone where I can think. I have to be alone where I can get myself ready mentally, physically. My training camp consists basically I'm getting up at 5 30 in the morning. I get to the road approximately 6 o'clock. I run approximately four, four and a half miles. At 6 o'clock in the morning, there isn't that much traffic. I would say that the uh, air is fairly fresh. It, it hasn't been filled with the carbon monoxide from the motors. And it, it's fresh. It's cool. I, I can get out there and I, I feel like running because it's crisp. And when I'm running, at the present time now, I'm thinking of shavers. My main thought is destroying Ernie shavers. I, I basically go over the whole fight during this four and a half mile stretch. I then come back. I lay down for approximately 15 minutes. I take a shower. I get up, I go eat, I have a very good breakfast, a big high protein yeah. breakfast. About six eggs, six pieces of bacon, orange juice and raw egg, wheat toast. I came to the camp, I weighed approximately 230 pounds, 233 pounds. I plan on fighting about 220. The reason that I chose 220 for this Ernie Shavers fight is because I feel that at 220, I will uh, be very quick, yet then again, I will have my power. I feel that 
With any power, I need to positive offset his power. And then I have to start preparing myself for the gym. That's the hard work, the, uh, the part that I dread the most. It's the part where you get down to business where you get your mind ready and get your body ready. The first thing I do when I come in is I turn the disco station on because I feel that if I can get the music in my body, I get the feeling it, it rejuvenates me, I feel like it works. The reason that I skip rope, I think the reason that most fighters skip rope is because of the fact that it helps your time and it helps your agility, it helps your mobility. I then get into the ring. The thing that I think about then is, hey, what am I doing wrong when I'm boxing? How can I correct it? Then comes, I think, the part that um, I enjoy quite a bit because it, then again, it's a necessary evil. The part where we box. The only difference between fighting here in the gym and fighting in the night of the fight is if I get hurt, I expect him to let up on me. If she gets hurt, I'm definitely going to let up on him. We all work together. We're one big happy family. After sparring, I then go straight to the heavy bag. Now, the heavy bag is, is for me, it's the thing where I increase my punching power, I increase my endurance. If I'm hitting wrong, then I'll know it with the way the shot goes going up my arm. Then, go to the speed bag. Speed bag for me is a lot of fun. It's uh, a bag where it's good for the hand-eye coordination, it's good for timing, uh, as well as listening to the music. I listen to the bag, and I wait for the round to end so I can quit and get out. So for Ernie Shavers, I feel that um, this fight is not gonna go over five, six rounds anyway. Either, I, either I'm going to sleep, or Ernie's going to sleep. Right there, Ernie Shavers coming down into the ring. Just making his appearance, coming down the aisle, surrounded by his handlers. 